Long Roads of Friendship, Chapter 6, Cause It's Gonna Make a Sound. Sunset reflected on the beauty of the settling dusk from her spot on a wooden bridge in one of Canterlot's better-known parks. The bridge overlooked a babbling stream that rippled to the last reflections of sunlight. She always loved the time of day that was her namesake. She put her hands on the wooden railing and rested her head on top of them. Today had been quite the dismal failure. She had been doing pretty well up until the incident at the petting zoo. Why am I so hung up about this? I should be glad that I have them out of my hair. She sighed, blowing on a tuft of hair that hung in front of her face. Of course, I just made it harder on myself to make friends with them. Yeah, that's a pretty big downside. Sunset groaned, shoving her hands into her pockets only to feel something soft smash into one of them. She pulled out the pink unicorn that she had won at the fair and frowned. <sighs> Twilight Sparkle. The unicorn just stared at her with its button eyes. You know this is all your fault, right? You get to go home and be a princess while I'm stuck here practically torturing myself. I'd drown you in the river if I wasn't dead set on setting you on fire. The unicorn just stared at her. I'm talking to a doll. I've reached a new low. She placed it on the railing next to her and continued to stare into the water, watching her distorted reflection. Why is it that both worlds are so fixated on friendship? All I've tried to do is make it through life without having to rely on anyone else. Is, is that so wrong? You also try to usurp the throne by brainwashing students and killing a princess. Sunset slumped against the railing, holding her arms over the side. Okay, I can kind of see how I may have taken things a little too far, but I had a good reason. Sunset frowned. She did have a good reason, didn't she? She was sure she did, she just couldn't recall what it was. Boo! Sunset let out a small shriek of surprise before she whipped around, and then she screamed again. Twilight Sparkle stood in front of her, covering her mouth to suppress her giggle of amusement. I'm sorry, I just always wanted to do that. Sunset stared at her for a moment before her brain started to function again. She balled her fists and snarled. What are you doing here? I was just taking my dog Spike out on a walk. Say hello, Spike. Looking down, Sunset saw a familiar dog sniffing her boot. Spike looked up at her and gave a few happy barks, wagging his tail all the while. Sunset brought her hands up to massage her forehead. They even have the same dog. She groaned. And they both just don't know when to leave me alone. Twilight sighed, all of the mirth gone from her face. Listen, I know that you don't like me. Oh gee, what gave you that idea? Which is why I'm even more confused as to why you saved me that night. If you don't like me, then why'd you do it? Sansa slumped her shoulders and looked away, refusing to meet Twilight's determined stare. What? You don't know why you saved me? No, I don't. Sunset lied. Twilight crossed her arms. Then that makes me think that you don't hate me as much as you let on. Sunset turned back to Twilight, a burning fire in her eyes. No, Twilight, I hate you. She said in a slow, even voice. I hate you so much that it hurts sometimes. Just the very thought of you makes my skin crawl. You are like a recurring nightmare that I can't wake up from, no matter how hard I try. Twilight took a few steps back, pain written in her eyes. Why? What did I ever do to you? The pressure on Sunset's throat returned. It's not what you did, it's what the other Twilight Sparkle did! Twilight stomped her foot, startling Spike into barking at the two girls, raising their voices. There you go again with the other Twilight Sparkle thing! What on earth are you talking about? There isn't another me! Yes, there is! There is another you who lives in another world, and she ruined my life! Oh, pfft. Twilight rolled her eyes. You don't seriously expect me to believe that, do you? No, actually, I don't. Then why are you telling me this instead of the truth? Because it is the truth! Sunset looked down at Spike, who was still barking. Shut up already! Spike folded his ears and tried to run behind Twilight's leg. Twilight scowled at Sunset and pointed with a finger. First of all, don't yell at my dog. And second, are you crazy? You think there's some alternate world with another me? Sunset brushed Twilight's hand away. No, I'm not crazy, and I don't think there's another world. I know there is another one. Sunset turned and walked halfway down the bridge before stopping. I think I know how I can finally get rid of her. She turned around. Twilight, do you really want to know the truth? Because it's going to destroy every fundamental thing that you believe in. I could destroy your view of the world right now. Do you really want that? Twilight opened her mouth, then hesitated, butting a lip. She was silent for a moment, eyes darting around the park as she thought. What could you possibly know that could reshape my worldview? She asked in a shaky voice. Sunset walked up to her and looked her straight in the eye. Magic exists, Twilight Sparkle. And not the Las Vegas smoke and mirrors kind. Actual magic. 
with spells and potions and curses. And there's a parallel world out there that can easily harness magic and do things that you can only dream of. Twilight took a step back, her mouth open in disbelief. She stared, mesmerized by Sunset's intense eyes. You're... you're lying! Sunset could hear the doubt in her voice. You have to be lying or, or crazy! Magic doesn't exist! Sunset smirked. Yes, it does, Twilight. It's extremely weak here, to the point of non-existence. But there's a world that's connected to this one where it's so powerful, they have cities made of clouds. Their rulers can move the sun, Twilight. Twilight took another step back, almost tripping over Spike. I don't... that, that isn't... That, that can't be... Satisfied, sense I turn to leave. That's what I thought. You don't want to hear the full truth, Twilight. You aren't ready for it. Go home. Forget you met me, and forget what I said. You'll sleep better at night. Sunset stalked off the bridge, a content smile on her face. She didn't even bother looking back at Twilight. She knew that she would just find her with a hopelessly confused or scared expression. There. I don't think I'll have to worry about her for a very long time. Rarity sat with her friends back in the cafe, where they had started their day at. They had finally gotten Fluttershy to stop crying and were now trying to enjoy the mugs of hot cocoa that they had ordered. Rarity stirred hers with a spoon, breaking up the swirl of whipped cream on top and blending it into the sweet black drink before taking a careful sip. We were making such good progress too. Well, maybe not good progress, but it was a start. If we just got Santa to actually enjoy herself, we might have broken through to her. She was jerked out of her thoughts when Rainbow slammed her mug down against the table, having already drained it. This is stupid! Why are we wasting our time with her? She clearly doesn't want to be our friend, so why should we bother trying to be hers? Pinky licked a dollop of whipped cream off of her own nose. Because, Dashy, everybody needs a friend, especially Sunset. If we don't try to make friends with her, she might go back to being mean to everyone. Pinky gasped. Or even worse, she might turn into a demon again and start throwing fireballs everywhere! Rainbow put an arm on the table and rested her head in her hand. Yeah, I doubt that's gonna happen again. Regardless... Rarity spoke up. We made a promise to try and help her, and we should keep it. And while I'm not too keen on the idea of building a friendship off of a promise, I suppose we have to start somewhere. You can't be serious, Rarity! She practically screamed at Fluttershy! And you still want to be friends with her? Rarity held up a hand. I'm not saying that she shouldn't apologize, but we should also consider that she's practically spent the last three years either alone or bossing someone around. We can't expect her to change overnight. Applejack nodded. Rarity's rat, maybe we should just try talking to her first, get to know her a little more. We might be able to avoid situations like this if we start by doing things that she lacks. Rainbow let out a frustrated growl. Fluttershy, you're with me on this, right? You can't seriously want to still be friends with Sunset Shimmer! Fluttershy just stared at her cocoa. Well, um, the goat did eat her jacket. Rainbow threw up her arms. What is wrong with you guys? Listen, I get that you want to keep your promise to Twilight, but this is a lost cause. Sunset isn't going to change. Now that ain't fair, Artie. You can't just judge her off of today. Applejack said. I'm not. I'm judging her off of everything that she's done since freshman year. Applejack gave her a stern look. Now, listen here, Dash. She apologized for that... More or less, that's in the past now. We all gotta move on and help her be a better person. Rainbow dropped her head against the table. You guys are hopeless. She raised it again, glaring at all of them. Fine, I'll let it go this time. But I swear, if she crosses one more line... Rainbow brought a fist into her open palm. I'm going to give her an early graduation present. Twilight's alarm went off at the same time that it always did, and she pressed the snooze button hoping that she could get a few more minutes of sleep. Then something wet began to tickle her face, and she started to giggle. Spike, stop it! Spike, okay, okay, I'm up! She rose from her bed, taking Spike into her arms and scratching him behind the ear. First day of my new school, buddy. Twilight said, a hint of longing in her voice. She looked up at her room, everything nice and organized in very specific fashions. Twilight had tried her hardest to replicate her old room as much as she could. Twilight sighed. She really hadn't wanted to move, but her father's promotion at work had required her entire family to have to move for the sake of convenience. She had been happy for her dad, he had really wanted the job, but Twilight had been forced to transfer out of her old private school. Her parents had thought it would probably be for the best, Twilight didn't have that many friends. Maybe she could make some more at a public school. Putting Spike down on the floor, Twilight got up and proceeded to get dressed, washing herself off in the bathroom and coming out the knots in her hair. She put on her nicest blouse and a long purple skirt, wanting to make a good first impression. Looking herself over in the mirror, she said, 
Mom is right. I should try and make a few friends this year. She frowned. But what if everyone avoided her, or was intimidated by her extensive knowledge of, well, pretty much everything? That was what happened last time. For the last three years, she only had one friend, though they had been like two peas in a pod. Well? Twilight gave herself a determined look. I'll make some new friends. That's what she'd want me to do. But first, she'd get some answers from Sunset Shimmer. Well, that's convenient for everyone all around. May not look it in their eyes, but still convenient. Anyways, let's get on to our spectacular donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltar, J10 Man, Darkside, and only one thing. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Color 557, Stu Hex, Sword of Brother and Mordred, Omicron Library, Will Chris, Twinkie, Hadzaza, Riot Soul, Dospo, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.